Hey yeah folks, I think I'm going to be able to manage about a video once a week so do hit subscribe if you are interested in more content because I'm not going to be sporadic. Fingers crossed if life and work stays steady of course. I've really enjoyed making videos for you guys and for anyone else who's thinking of tuning in. So without further ado, let's talk about today's game. Visigoths vs. Morgoths by Lucian Khan. Today's game is very humorous and light. It all takes place in one place, the mall. This one is a mall with its own colourful settings, but I'm sure most of you know what a mall, or what we call them in Australia, a shopping centre is. It has been a minute since I was a teenager, but I do remember hanging out at my local shops with nothing better to do. Do kids still do that these days? I hope they do. It's very formative. You do get a very detailed map of the mall with some very fun locations to play with. With names like a Feta Worse Than Death and Blairs and big disc energy, you can sort of guess what kind of game this is. It's light and it's fun. I think if I was running the game, I absolutely would add a few stores or a cinema to pay tribute to some of the unique things from my time as a mall kid. Now this setting is populated with lots of non-playable characters for your party to interact with and meet. Like the person who works at a feta worse than death is called Judith, who is a bi-questioning cis girl, white and Jewish, 16, and rocks Victorian goth aesthetic. Some of these player characters are romanceable, but there are others that just aren't. I think that's nice. They've got their own little stories going on with exes and friends that work at different stores and not everyone can be seduced with a successful role in a game. There are also two main factions in this game and the stores are divided up between them. Loyalty to the Morgoths and loyalty to the Visigoths with a couple of undecided stores that are still yet to be claimed for a side. The mall comes packed with things for your players to engage in. Food stores, clothing, jewellery stores, other shopping outlets, and even places where you can engage with activities like roller skating, for example. Something that I think is really charming about this game is the game master here is called the Mall Rat. They don't have a loyalty to either the Visigoths or the Mall Goths, Rather, they might be a slightly older teenager who happens to know the ins and out of the mall. It's pretty rare for a game to give a game master a flavour to their character and I think that's very fun and cool. Now, I've been mentioning Morgoths and Visigoths quite a bit. That's because that is the two sides that your players can choose to play characters from. Visigoths are known to be from the antiquity period who sacked Rome. We don't know much about them, but in this universe, some of them have time traveled to the 1990s and now habit and haunt them all, looking to gain territory over the Morgoths who proudly wear their black lipstick and fishnets. For the two types, there are three subtypes each for Visigoth and Morgoth, and they're all fun and unique with their own interesting quirks. This game is a player versus player scenario, which I find is quite rare for a role-playing game. It's definitely still a collaborative process, but your players will go up against each other choosing to back one faction or the other. The character creation process for, because of this is extremely collaborative. One of my favourite things about this is that when you build your character, someone from the other side has to pick an embarrassing trait for you and if you refuse that embarrassing trait, 
You have to take two from the table. These embarrassing traits weren't at all devastating to a character build, rather they were all funny quirks that I've definitely seen in a lot of people. So this game is about territory and social conflicts. I mentioned it was player versus player, so most of the time it is done in roll-offs. Players will produce the appropriate dice in this game, d6s, and roll against each other. They'll then check if there's any bonuses they can add, and the person with the highest number wins. Now, if a player character wanted to perform an action against an inanimate object, generally they would roll and then perform that action without opposition, because the object isn't sentient and cannot really oppose them. This roll-off style also applies to the mall rat game master. If they are playing an NPC, they will roll for them as well in the stats. I think that makes it a really fun game of chance. Or if two player characters simultaneously want an action to occur, like their two characters go on a date or kiss even, that action will just happen since no one is opposing that idea. While this game is built around player versus player action, it's still really a wholesome and fun game. Injuries will never be life-threatening. Real world, big drama might not really enter the mall, and if you try leave the mall, you'll mysteriously find yourself roundabout somehow back inside. Conflicts that can occur are mostly about social interactions like crushes, maybe a person's parent turning up, or petty fights over which store belongs to which faction. I've covered most of the content that is in here already, but you do also get character sheets, some really detailed maps of the mall and simplified ones, simplified relationships and characters for the NPCs and more complex ones, as well as cute little details in the pre-written adventures. There are also six pre-written adventures you can play, either out of order as a one-shot or as a sequential campaign. There is no leveling up or advancing in this game, which gears it more towards one-shots, but the idea behind it is the more will always be just as dangerous as the first time you stepped in. I think this game is very sweet. It embraces the awkwardness of being a goth teen or a time-traveling Germanic warrior. I have to say this book was also just delightful to read. Everything is set out very cleanly and clearly with great little text boxes for little bits of information and plenty of gaps in the page. They're not trying to forcibly squeeze it in with teeny font. I paid about 40 Australian dollars for this book, which is on the steeper end for a paper pack role playing game. However, with Australian import issues, I totally understand why. This was, I believe, originally a Kickstarter backed game, and I'm really glad I was able to get my hands on it. I think this game would be a great palate cleanser for any gaming group, just needing a break after a long, very emotionally drawn out campaign. So tell me, would your gaming group play Visigoths versus Morgoths? If you feel so inclined, commenting, liking, subscribing, that notification bell icon, they all help me feel more motivated to make more videos. If you have any ideas of how I can improve or anything to say at all, please, leave a comment down below. I had a lot of fun today and I hope to see you at the gaming table. Bye!